Mr. Hugh Spottiswood came to me in 1912 with a commission to paint the royal family after the manner of Winterhalter's Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, which, with their Majesty's permission, he proposed to present to the nation. The King and Queen weren't in favour of the whole family and suggested that the picture should only include the Prince of Wales and Princess Mary besides themselves. The Queen expressed a wish to see my idea of the grouping, and a sketch I made was pronounced satisfactory, so I was permitted to have the white drawing room for a studio. After the studies were made, the picture was painted in my studio at Cromwell Place, where the King and Queen came to see the finished work. They were so pleased that the King said he would like to have a hand in it, and thinking that royal blue might be an appropriate colour, I mixed it on the palette, and taking a brush, he applied it to the garter ribbon, the Queen not to be outdone following his example. It is recorded that when Velasquez completed Las Meninas, King Philip asked for a brush in colour and painted the red cross of the Knights of Calatrava on the breast of the painter in the picture. In 1934, when the Prince of Wales was sitting for the Master Mariner picture, he asked me many pertinent questions about painting in general. Then he said, I'm going to ask you an impertinent question, but you need not answer it. How much are you getting for the picture? I told him. Putting his hand to his head, he exclaimed, My God! Do you think, sir, I am charging Lord Wakefield too much or too little, I asked. He smiled and said nothing. There were nearly a hundred portraits in the picture, for each of which I painted a separate study, and after the sitting I showed them to him. Ah, he said, I now understand. He'd evidently thought my fee was too high. Although he showed great patience while being painted, and recognised how necessary it was to give the painter every assistance, the prince couldn't help remarking that at that moment he was doing the work of a professional model by sitting to at least five or six artists of different kinds, not including photographers, who were taking up every minute he could spare. I had the same problem to solve in the Master Mariner picture that faced me in the surrender of the German fleet that of mixing electric light and white fog. One light is inclined to obliterate the other, resulting in negation of effect, the subtlety of the colour scheme being practically lost on the spectator. The other artificially lit scenes, which I've painted such as the House of Lords or Wimborne House, have been frankly candlelight or electricity, and therefore much more obvious. There's no greater charm than the mixture of the violet of twilight and the orange of electric or lamplight. But perhaps only Whistler has successfully got this onto canvas. When I painted the House of Lords, I was permitted to work in the press gallery, looking down on their lordships, not on a level with them as in the House of Commons. Unfortunately, I wasn't near the ladies' gallery on the afternoon when two peers, both masters of invective, were engaged in trouncing each other over the Irish question as it approached the solution. They were attentively listened to by their wives. One, losing her temper, kept repeating to herself in a voice the other couldn't fail to hear, the dirty dog, the dirty dog. At last the other replied, Please, change the sex of the animal and apply it to yourself. The gentlemen of the press were most considerate in pointing out some of the peers I didn't know by sight. There was one I knew well, Lord Birkenhead. I'd painted him in tweeds for the inner temple, besides dining with him on several occasions. He sits in state on the woolsack in the middle of the picture, with Lord Morley on his left, moving the address on the Irish Treaty to a full house. 